Hi, my name is Dave Heller. I'm a furniture maker in Charlottesville, Virginia. And uh, we are making a video today on a class that I will be teaching at the Wooden Shop in June of 2023 called Veneering for Furniture Makers. And uh, this is going to be what we are going to make over the two days. So uh, Joshua has made a couple of videos of me previously demonstrating uh, furniture making techniques and also a little bit of marquetry, I believe. Uh, and you can check them out on his YouTube, the Wood and Shop YouTube site, or um, the Wood and Shop website. So I wanna give you about a 30 second introduction. Uh, I've been making furniture for um, a long time now. <laughs> and. Uh, um, professionally for 13 years and at a certain point I decided that I liked to make furniture that had some decoration on them and I moved towards marquetry so so this is an Art Nouveau style panel and I made it for art but it could just as easily be a panel in a piece of furniture and uh, here's a couple of other things I've done recently so here's looking at you um, that was an experimental piece. I just made it to see if I could. And this is a, this is a more typical, um, everybody likes a bird in their piece of furniture somewhere, you know, so. Anyways, so that's, that's the kind of stuff that I do sometimes, and I do teach classes in that. Um, they're small classes because of the tools involved. Um, but that's not what we're talking about today. What we're talking about today is veneering for furniture makers. So um, this is very much of a style. This is a federal um, panel. So certain, certain furniture styles over the centuries have included a lot of veneering. And um, federal is the one that comes to mind immediately, although Art Deco and Art Nouveau uh, and Arts and Crafts, definitely there's some veneers and inlays. But um, the techniques that are involved in making this piece are very helpful if you're making traditional furniture. And um, I have made several pieces of furniture, which um, Joshua's gonna show you on the screen. Um, some high federal style pieces involving um, repeat patterns. Um, and this is what we're gonna talk about today. So the, the video or more likely videos are gonna be in two parts. In the first part, we are going to make the field, which is everything but the oval fan. And in the second part, we're going to make the oval fan, and then we're going to put it into the panel. Because those are two completely separate operations. And in the class, the first day will be spent making the panel. And then the second day, we will make the shell. Or the fan, rather, sorry. You could put a shell in there, but that's, it's not a shell. So this, let's talk about the elements of this. This is what we call a four-way match. There are four panels made fo from four sequential slices of veneer, and they're arranged at exactly the same angle to have that exploding star pattern. There are several other patterns I could have chosen. That was the one that appealed to me that day. And I have a fillet going around the outside, and then we have cross banding around the edges. These are all very traditional design elements. But let's talk a little bit about veneer first, because in order to figure out how we're, we're, you always start in the center in a panel like this and work to the edges. So we're, um, we got to know what we're going to work on there. In fact, I will do one other thing first. So when you're making something that looks like this panel, I guess I'm going to put that panel there and just leave it there for a while. When you're making something that looks like this panel, it's very geometric, and so you have to design it precisely. Because if you make it not precise, then your eye will be, is very sensitive to the lack of precision. And um, so we are going to design it precisely. We're going to draw it on this piece of, um, we're going to draw it on this piece of board here, and then we are going to make the pieces to fit the, pi to fit the picture. So, um, 
so this is an 11 by 15 panel, I believe. Might be 12 by 15, but whatever it is. If you were doing this for a real piece of furniture, you would know how big your panel is because it's the size that fits in the frame, right? And so, for example, if you were making a federal style um, sideboard, you might have two central doors with two side doors. And each of those doors you would have designed to fit the space. And then you would have the frame width. And so you would know how big your panels are. So you wouldn't actually do the veneering work until you had already sized your frames and made your frames. And then you would measure from the inside of the, the rabbits for the frame. That would be your panel. So, so here is my panel in its, in its plywoody um, elegance. I would normally use MDF for this um, because MDF is very stable and flat, but um, it doesn't show pencil nearly as well as plywood. So I'm making it out of plywood today. So, um, so I've got a one inch border here and then I got an eighth inch fillet and then panels. Um, so normally if I wanted one inch visible, I would have a one and a quarter inch maybe as my, um, as my edging because some's going to be in the frame. But this is just a demonstration, so I only want one inch. So I really like this little tool. I'm going to draw all the way around and then I'm going to draw my fillet. Anyways, it's going to end up looking just like that. Um, so I've got my frame. I've got a fillet. It's a little wider here because I'll show you what I'm going to make. It's a little bit different than this one. And then I have my four pieces, which I have labeled as 1B, 2, 3B, and 4. And I'll explain that later. So we are, we are going to start by sizing and cutting these four panels. And then we'll make the other around it. So now that we've done that, let's talk a little bit about the veneer. So this is a flitch of walnut veneer. It's 19 consecutive slices, which is a weird number, but it is. Um, and so they were cut off the tree in sequential order. And it's really important when you buy your veneer, you buy it from someone who tells you, like you say, I want a flitch and they give you a flitch. Because what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to book match, meaning roll my pieces, and I should get very, very similar patterns. If it's quarter sawn, you can get identical patterns, but when it's a flat sawn tree like this one, if you notice, this shape and this shape aren't the same. They're similar, and as you, if you were to flip through it, urgh, As you get further towards the center of the tree, it becomes more and more consistent, but it's not completely consistent. And that is really important for us to deal with because what we're trying to do when we're making this pattern is in a perfect world, we want it to be identical. Now, of course, we are working with wood, so we know identical is not, you know, it's not a thing, but we want it to be harmonious. That's what we really want. And so to the extent possible, we want to make things consistent. So I have here four, it's, these are pieces of those bits there. Four consecutive slices. And you'll notice they're numbered 13, 14, 15, and 16. And that's because uh, one through four uh, got used for something. And then five through eight is over there. And 9 through 12 is over there, so this is the next set. And if you look at it, they're not the same. They're very, very similar, but there seems to be an offset. So if I, I'm going to use white pencil here so you guys can see what the heck's going on. So if I look at the peak of, the, of those shapes, as you can see, there's a, there's a shift, and it's consistent. And in fact, you could also draw a line through here. And you say, well, why would I do that? The why I would do that 
is that I want to look at these, and if they're dramatically different one from the other, that would be a problem. And it would mean that um, when I put these four together, they would not look right. So this is a little bit different than, than this one, but it's okay. But if it was vastly different, that would be a problem. So one of the things you'll notice is that there's an offset. And the, one of the ways I can confirm there's an offset is if I bring this up, that fits really nicely about there. If you look at the grain there, it now looks like one piece of wood. And I can then take this piece and I can do the same thing. So it's almost like it was slipping. But this is because when the veneer was being sliced, it was not being sliced. Um, it was being sliced at an angle to the growth of the tree. So what it means is that the, pattern, the growth patterns, which are the, the tree building itself out year on year, are at an angle to the slices. So this is very typical and um, and we just, you just have to deal with it. So how do we deal with it? So this is how we deal with it. We, in fact, this works really well as a, as a quick technique, is to, you line up your pattern here, and then you cut this bit off. Because I can't make this one longer, so I have to make this one shorter to make the pattern the same. If you've watched any of my previous videos, I'm a big fan of Olfa cutter knives um, with the black Japanese blades. They are very, very sharp, very reliable. It's the only thing I use for this kind of work. Now you can use a saw, I suppose, um, but I don't. Okay, so I just cut 14. So I use the same one, I use the, the shortest one, 13, for all of them to measure them against. As you can see, as you will see later, um, none, these, these bottom edges are not going to be used for anything later. There. So what I'm looking at is I'm trying to get a match on this side and on this side. So if I'm not as far, if I'm not far enough along, you see I've got a match here, but I'm, I'm off on this side. And if I go too far up, I can get a match here and I'm off the other way. So when you can get both sides to line up, there. Mm. Okay, well, it's not super precise. You can also do it, and I normally would, off that measurement. So I'm thinking that there's a problem with the third one. <sighs> And the reason I'm thinking there's a problem with the third one is that I had to cut a fair bit more off of, um, eh, it's not that much, eighth of an inch. Okay, so here we go. So let's just look at piece number 13. It, how you orient this is really important. Um, and there's a bunch of ways of trying to figure out what the best approach is. If you put two mirrors on there and you rotate them around, you can, um, you can see what the pattern's gonna look like with a four-way match. That works very well. It turns out, because I've already done some of this, I, I know what I want to do. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my handy dandy ruler here, 65. And I'm going to measure, so I'm going to measure from here to here, and I'm just going to measure the middle of it. 
and it's going to be 32. And then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to measure it and it's 18, so it's 9. I need to use the white pencil so you can see what I'm doing. And there's a line that runs from the middle of this darker patch to the middle of this one. And that line I can now set on there. And I get an orientation. And because all of these have similar patterns. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I missed one other. I missed something. You should have told me, guys. The issue, so, so we cut one end to make them um, the same, at the same pattern. Well, now we have to do the other end. This is um, um, a wooden, a Baltic birch plywood um, ruler. I use it for lots of things, and I have a piece of sandpaper um, glued to it. So we're going to now cut all these pieces so that they are the same length. Because, for example, in this case, I measured halfway between the thing here. Well, when it's shorter, it might be slightly different. Probably not. I sure hope not. But it could be slightly. Sorry. Ooh. So this walnut's a bit um, chippy. So um, not quite sure why. It really, I've tried to treat it well. Ooh. So what I would normally do is I would put tape, blue tape, across the back of these pieces because there's something going on there, the way that fell apart like that. Okay. <coughs> I use chalk on um, walnut because I can't see pencil very well. Um, the white pencil is um, very clear. It doesn't come off very well. So I try not to use more of it than I need. Uh, you can get it off with a scraper. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to draw this line by measuring halfway between here and here and halfway between here and here. Draw the line. So, and then we're going to use that line to um, orient this piece here. Wow, this one's long. Interesting. Okay, um, I'll put this away for a little while. Um, I need to be able to see the other end of the line. <laughs> so so uh, oh, I could do it that way. Yeah, do I want to do it that way? Sure. So what's important when you do this kind of stuff is that you're consistent. So right now, these are all the same length. And what I have, what I have been doing is, is placing this down there, and then I have to line that up. Um, but instead, I can put this one here and line it up there. And, uh, because what I want in the end is I want to cut a piece here and here so that these pieces have the grain oriented this way, but the cut lines are oriented based on the piece. So you're looking at it going, well, why has he chosen that? Well, I chose, I chose that because I liked it. But there are alternatives. So this is one of the alternatives. Gives you a very different look. This is another alternative and gives you a different look again. So, in fact, this one, if we were to choose it, would give us a diamond going around the center, which is what I didn't do here, but that's, so, so I've got 
again, I've got the grain going outwards, but I could just as easily have turned these at not 90 degrees, but at the other angle there and had a diamond running around. And I, I, it's a very effective look. Um, that high federal piece that, I, that, I, um, that Joshua showed you earlier, that's what we've got going on on the top of the piece is that pattern. This one, this one, this one, this one, okay? So, I'm going to put this piece here. I'm gonna put it here on the line and here. And oh, and by the way, I drew that line and whenever you're doing this kind of work, you need to have a center line. But you don't have to put the center on the center. You could, for example, choose an offset. So I work in metric. So let's say I could put an offset. I could make it um, 30 millimeters using my fat pencil here. 30 millimeters off. And I can put that on the line. And what that does is it shifts the pattern to one side or the other. These are the design decisions that you make when you're setting up your first panel. Now, if I'm making uh, a set of panels, like that, four, that mythical four-door four um, federal cabinet that I'm making, I would make sure I had enough veneer for at least five doors, and I would make the first one as an experiment to confirm that I liked it. And then once, so I would play around with those extra pieces of veneer, and I'd make a panel and say, yes, I really do like this. And I would make the other four all at the same time identically. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna line this up here. I would tape this on usually. And I would cut it. So I would cut 13 and 15 here and I would cut 14 and 16 there and then I would, that would be a way of maintaining my pattern. And then I would put them together and I would get this. Okay, so this, this is, in fact, <laughs> yeah, I turned it. This is something you gotta be very careful of. And I should have been checking because this one is this way. Oh, there it goes, there we go. Okay, I feel a little better. <laughs> okay, so, um, so you cut your four pieces. So what I did in these is, is I cut that edge on all four of them and then I butted them together, but I didn't cut anything else. And that's because I want, I don't want to cut anything. I'm one of these people that always likes to keep options in my pocket. And I wanted to make sure I liked the way this looked before I did any cutting. So I put this one and this one together. So this is 12B and uh, 11. So this is 11. And I've managed to cut off the numbers because they were there. And there's 9B and that would be 10. So um, what's important here is that we've got 9, 10, 11, 12 meaning that, the, that nine and 12, who are the two that are the furthest apart in the flitch, are not touching each other. Each piece is being touched by one piece that's the next one off and then one that's two off. So once we get to this point, we can cut this line and then we can square it up.
If you're interested in learning traditional woodworking, come take a class at our school in Earliesville, Virginia. You can also visit our website at woodandshop.com, where you'll find a bunch of free woodworking lessons, workshop tours, and our very popular tool buying guides. And make sure you subscribe to our free newsletter to get our latest articles and videos. Enjoy!